Hello, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be exploring the menu system of the Sony A6100. Let's go. Thanks for joining me. Uh, we are continuing our series on the shooting menu for the Sony 6100. We're going piece by piece through the menu system uh, here. And if this is the first link that you've clicked on, please do note that we have previous videos on the uh, other parts of the shooting menu that we've already covered and on the quick menu. And so please do check those out if you're trying to cover all of the shooting controls in order. Before we jump into it, as always, everything we do here is brought to you by Camera Lessons Online, where we believe in teaching the essential skills so that everybody can create beautiful visual art with cameras and photography equipment. We have a four hour introduction to photography class. We we have books, we have free downloads. I encourage you to go check it out. But without further ado, here is our continuing uh, exploration of the menu for the Sony 6100. So we're in page four, and there's only a couple things on here. They have to do with MR or memory recall. And this is where you can save some selected group of uh, settings and come back to that exact setup whenever you want. Uh, I use this because I've set up an exact exposure and white balance for the studio that I shoot some of my videos in. Some people set this up because they shoot swim meets in the exact same room and they shoot them a particular way. There's lots of reasons why you might, might set up a memory recall. Now, if you don't have one saved, you have nothing to recall. That's why this first slot is grayed out. The second slot is where you actually save your settings to a recall register. And so if we go into this here, <clears throat> If we go into it, um, you're gonna see, here's the settings I'm in right now. Program mode, ISO auto, center weighted metering, white balance set to incandescent, all these different settings. And at the top are the memory registers. And I can go through and select which register I want to save my particular settings into. And I've got lots of them to be able to choose from. So let's say that I wanna set something up. Uh, let's go to manual mode. I'm going to change just a couple things inside of the function menu. And I think I'm realizing here I need to change interval shooting because we just turned that on um, just a minute ago in, uh, in our conversations about interval shootings. We're going to turn that off, go back into our function menu, and just set a couple things. I'm going to change the drive mode, I think, to high. And let's see, continuous focusing mode. And let's go to tracking wide and this is actually a good way that I like to save some stuff and so I'm going to save this as register one and it saves it so there we go so why is that recall turned off because I'm not in memory recall mode right now which is on the dial so go to MR memory recall and now it's something I can select and I can go to that memory recall one you notice that first one set manual and the other ones are just this default program mode that I can do but if I go to a memory recall one, it's exactly what I just set up because that's where I saved it. If you look, there it is. Manual, 1 160th of a second, ISO auto, drive mode set to high, autofocus continuous, tracking turned on. So there's what we just set, and I can come back to it any time I want, which is very nice. So I, I use that feature. I find it actually quite useful. Page five uh, starts the autofocus section, and we're going to start with a couple things that are in the quick menu, so we're not going to go into depth on them, and that's specifically going to be the focus mode and focus area, the first two options. They're here in the menu, but they're in the quick menu, so they're in that video. As I said in our first video, if there's something I'm skipping over like that, please do check out the quick menu video uh, to get uh, information and instruction on those. I just don't want to duplicate uh, for purposes of time. So now we're going to go to the autofocus illuminator. This is a little light on the front of the camera. If the camera has trouble focusing because it's dark, it'll turn this on to assist in the autofocus system. If you're somewhere that doesn't want flash, like a museum, they also want AF illuminators turned off. They just don't know the language for it. So that's basically auto. It decides if it's going to happen or completely turned off which might slow down your focusing system in some instances, but if you can't use it, you can't use it. So now we're in the face and eye autofocus set or set of options. And 
face and eye priority and autofocus. This is just on and off for this whole menu. They call it face slash eye because they used to have eyeball autofocus as its own feature, which meant its own button. That was cumbersome to use, and so they just combined all eyeball autofocus into face detection. If it can determine the eye, it tries to prioritize focus on the eye with no additional input. Uh, this is for humans super accurate. But this next thing down, subject detection, is actually quite a new uh, feature for Sony. And that is, is it human or is it animal? Animal is all animals. So you don't get to decide cats, dogs, uh, etc. I've used this on dogs, I've used it on horses, and I've used it on birds. I've so far found it to be inconsistent. Sometimes it determines what I'm looking at. Sometimes face detection doesn't operate at all. If you're in animal face detection, it will not pick up humans. And if you're in humans, it won't pick up on animals. So you do need to actually select this. Uh, for humans, unbelievably accurate and useful. Animals, I found that to be a little bit flaky. So we're going to slide it for human. And let's go back into our menu here. And the third thing down is right left eye selection. So if you're in auto, it's going to pick which eye it focuses on based on which one it thinks is closest. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. Next, you get right and left. Please note this is right and left from the point of view of the subject, the subject's right eye, as opposed to the or as opposed to camera right or camera left. Please do keep that in mind. But they do show you a pictorial description to make sure that there's no confusion on the subject. But it does mean the subject's right eye or the subject's left eye. Um, I usually leave it in auto, but if I'm having somebody stand a particular way, I might uh, select that just to be doubly sure that I get the front, uh, the forward eye as the one that prioritizes for focus. So the next thing down is face detect frame display. This is whether or not it's actually showing you the box around the subject's face that it's prioritizing. Some people find this distracting. I don't. I find it reassuring. And so I always leave it on. But you can turn it off if you find that it is just not helpful for you and your shooting. Uh, animal eye display is the exact same thing, but for animals. Is it actually showing you the eye that it's pulling focus on when it's using animal face detection? I go ahead and leave that on, but again, I haven't had as much luck with that particular um, setting, the animal eyeball focus, yet. One day, possibly I will. All right, next is what Sony calls AF with shutter, autofocus with shutter. This is where back button focus is, everybody. Everyone who's been looking for it or has trouble finding it because it is in a different place with every camera system in the world. With Sony, it's underneath the autofocus page in the first menu, autofocus with shutter. If you don't know what uh, that means to be back button focus, it's if a button on the back of the camera focuses, but your shutter button does not. There's an AF button on the back of the camera to use right out of the gate. But the shutter release button defaults to focusing. If you desire for that to be turned off, this is where you do it, and it defaults to on out of the box, which means the shutter button does focus. Off, of course, turns that off. If that's the way you want to shoot, go for it. That's the way I shoot, but however you do it. All right, pre-autofocus is actually a feature that carried over from the Minolta days, and this is where you take the camera, and if you just pull it up to eye level, it knows that it's brought up to basically pointing straight, and it will start trying to find something to focus on and start actually focusing before you even push a button. Uh, they've had that technology for a long time. It's called pre-AF, and you can turn that on or off. Um, I turn it on if it gets me just a hair faster uh, to actually get to the subject being in focus, I'm going to use it. All right, so page six, we start with something called I Start AF. This is actually an older feature. Um, this allows the camera to start focusing as soon as your eye goes up to the viewfinder. You're going to notice it's grayed out. And the reason it's grayed out is because of the lens. This is only usable with certain adapters going on to A-mount lenses, the old Minolta lenses or Sony A-mount uh, lenses. So autofocus area, auto clear. This is not whether it's using an area, but it's whether it's showing you the uh, area that it's using to focus, um, whether it is always actually showing it to you, uh, which would be off, or whether it actually clears it from view so that it's not distracting, and that would be on. So it shows it to you when you first start using it, and then it kind of disappears into the background. So that's just what it actually displays to you. So display continuous AF area, 
The important part is the middle part. Continuous AF it means in continuous autofocus does it constantly show you the area that is in focus, but it can only do this with a couple of the modes, wide and zone being the most common that people use for it, but those larger kind of areas, um, whether it continues to show those to you while you are shooting in continuous autofocus mode, which is why it's differentiated from the last menu option. Okay, so autofocus micro adjustment. This is kind of a big deal. This is uh, lens calibration or lens adjustment, people call it. And this has become a really big deal in photography. And I'd say the last two years where you can go in and, and tell the camera that this lens and camera combination are front focusing or back, back focusing and thus missing critical sharpness. Um, and this is a this is based on distance. If the lens thinks it's focusing to exactly one meter, uh, but the camera's trying to make it focus um, to one meter, and the lens is actually one meter and one centimeter, it's it's off, and you're going to get missing critical focus. Now, the lens has to be one that the camera can adjust, and that's actually going to be a problem here because I did not have uh, a lens that was actually uh, adjustable on the camera doing this. Uh, but this is where it would be and how you do it. First, you take autofocus adjustment set and you turn it on. And then the camera is going to allow for adjustment. What you do with a pad of paper, you set up a camera shooting at an angle. And you go to a mount, which I'm not going to be able to do here, uh, just because the lens that's on it, as you're going to see, um, doesn't let me do it. Um, but then you, I, I like to start all the way at one end, shoot a picture, move the amount a little bit closer or farther away, whichever one you did, shoot another picture and go through all, I think it's like 40 different options, uh, moving from front to back. You pick the one that's the sharpest, go to your notes that you've been making while doing this, and that's going to be the amount that's going to be ideal. I would not personally do this until I'd noticed an issue with the lens. Now, I'm one person on that one. I have one friend who's a very accomplished photographer. And he just, as a matter of course, when he buys a lens, sets it up with his camera, and he does this out of the box. And he has found that he has set the, uh, a lens and camera combination anywhere from uh, a range of uh, plus three to negative three, just with a totally normal lens. Um, and that, that's just his system. So however you go about this is totally legit. If you have set up an adjustment that you think is just not working, you could just clear it. And that's what your bottom option there is going to be. So that's where my uh, autofocus micro adjustment is. And one day I might do a video on actually showing that whole uh, process. And that's where I'm going to wrap up uh, this particular video, and we're going to get started on the next video with the next page. Again, I break these up just to be a little bit cognizant of time and so that people can find the uh, part of a particular video that they're looking for. I don't want these to be hour, hour and a half long uh, things. So thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time.